What's going on guys? Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan here, late night, Sunday night, here to talk with you real quick about the Milwaukee Bucks and their victory in Game 4 over the Brooklyn Nets by a score of 107 to 96. Want to talk about this game? Was watching this myself Sunday afternoon at home. Was fairly intrigued by this particular game. It's turning into a pretty good series, so I really want to just kind of catch up with you guys on this. Definitely storylines going on throughout this series. If you do like content this particular video, go ahead, hit that thumbs up. That would be awesome. Certainly would appreciate that. Go ahead, subscribe to my channel as well, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan. Now, let's get started, guys. Now, before I get into kind of my breakdown of this, which really the breakdown, <laughs> at least for game four, almost begins and ends with the Kyrie Irving injury in the second quarter. He would leave with an ankle injury and not return. Before I get into that, and x-rays were negative from what I understand on Kyrie Irving's ankle. He is questionable for game five, which will be played in Brooklyn. If this, I was looking, and just check it on my own, if this does go seven, it will be next Saturday, which I believe is the 19th, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if this series is to go Saturday. It looks, I mean, it is to go seven, excuse me. It looks like it might. I mean, they're now tied up at two. So before I get into the breakdown, as I was mentioning of this game, it really, you got to look at it from an angle of if you're a Buck fan and if you're a Net fan, your emotions right now are completely different. <laughs> They're actually opposite of one another. If you're a Net fan right now, you're definitely feeling a little bit frustrated because of the fact that your team is not uh, staying healthy, obviously. You, you, two of your best players now are injured. James Harden, we know, with, with the injury, and he, he just seems questionable, uncertain about his return. I mean, uh, the, the situation seems uncertain. It's not that he seems uncertain, but the situation seems, seems uncertain. And then you have Kyrie's ankle injury so if you're a net fan right now I mean you're definitely feeling a little frustrated because not only did you have this you had this series even even without Harden just going with Kyrie Durant and the rest of the team the supporting cast they were playing well enough to win they they were off to a commanding two game to none lead now to see it dwindle going to Milwaukee, losing two straight, and now it's any one series. Nets still do hold the home court, however. Now, if you're a Buck fan, your emotions are just like, you're fired up. You're seeing Giannis again explode for 34 and 12. You're feeling really good about things. You're seeing Middleton come through in the clutch. Your team, unlike the Nets, is staying healthy. And you have newfound hope after just getting destroyed in Game 2 in Brooklyn. They are right back into this series and have tied it at 2. So if you're a Milwaukee Buck fan, you're not frustrated at all. You're fired up. You're ready to go for Game 5. Now, as far as the breakdown, I mean, when you look at the, the way these teams went into this game. It was very, they're very even. It was kind of funny. I mean, credit to Steve Nash and the Nets. They play the Bucks very even and very good without Harden. I mean, that, that says a lot for, for actually for Steve Nash, Nash and the Net team. Durant pretty much playing, you know, that leader role, carrying the team. But you notice, here it is. Here's game four for you. Once Kyrie goes out, once he goes out, there go the the possession, the quality of possessions for the Nets went down the drain, guys. It just did, and you really can't, uh, you know, I can't be negative really uh, uh, as far as the Nets go, or making a negative comment towards the, the Nets because hey, their their point guard, their playmaker is is out of the game, and it showed 
so it was so obvious that they they just couldn't really get any quality shots. I mean, they had a few here and there, but it was a completely different Nets team offensively once Kyrie left in the second quarter. The breakdown, Durant would lead the way for the Nets, 28. He would have a pretty good game, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, a steal, and a block. Kyrie still scores 11, gets 5 rebounds, 2 assists, steal, and a block, even though he played less than a half. Blake Griffin, a little bit quiet in this one, 8, 5, and 3 assists and a steal. Joe Harris, 8, 4 rebounds and assist. Bruce Brown, 7 points, 1 rebound, 2 assists, a steal. They didn't really get much out of those three. Blake Griffin, Joe Harris, Bruce Brown, all pretty much held in check. Jeff Green was pretty good off the bench, 8 points, 5 rebounds, and assist. And he had Mike James with five points, three rebounds, and assist to steal. Landry Shamit with a five points and a rebound. Chris Chioza had five points. Nicholas Claxton, four points, rebound, three assists, steal, and a block. Uh, Luana Cabarro, and that is Timothy, of course, would have three points and an assist. They played a lot of guys. Tyler Johnson, two points. Didn't realize, I forgot he was on the Nets. Reggie Perry, two points and a rebound. So Giannis leads the way for the Bucks, As mentioned, 34-12-3, he had a block. Chris Middleton, you know, he does what he's got to do for his team. This guy is a winner. I mean, he goes out there, if his shot isn't falling, he's going to figure out ways to beat you. He, he had 19 points, 4 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. Drew Holiday played well, 14, 3, and 9 assists. A guy that stepped up, P.J. Tucker, in the starting lineup, had a decent game. I mean, what's not to like about P.J. Tucker's contribution of 13.7 rebounds? I'm sure the Bucks are going to take that, an assist and a steal. Brooke Lopez, quiet on the offensive end, but he does help in other ways. Six points, but he comes through with... With 11 rebounds and assists, he had three steals. So 11 rebounds, three steals for Brooke Lopez. That's another example of a guy with, that his shot may not be there. His, he may not be involved really in the offense, but he's going to figure out ways to beat you. Him and Chris Middleton seem to have that going for them, I've noticed in this series and, and during the regular season a little bit. I mean, I watch the Bucks here and there during the regular season. Bryn Forbes had uh, double figures off the bench, 10 points, rebound, and assist. Connaughton, Pat Connaughton got banged up there in that one play where he was looking for the foul. He like, <laughs> I felt bad though. I mean, he got hit pretty hard there. Eight points, two rebounds, three assists. Looks like he had four steals. Did he really have four steals? Wow. Two blocks for Pat Connaughton. Wow. Uh, that's pretty impressive, guys. Uh, Axel Tupani, three points. Elijah Bryant had a rebound. Bobby Portis would have a rebound, an assist, and two blocks for the Bucks. So, really, guys, I mean, the rebounding was pretty much even in this one. 43 for the Nets to 42 for the Bucks. I mean, virtually even. Field goal percentage wasn't great for either team. That was also virtually even. Bucks shoot 44.3%. Nets shoot 43.4%. I mean, you're only looking at a percent difference. The Bucks were a little bit better from three. They took more threes. They took 14 more threes than the Nets. Bucks took a lot of threes. 47, they would convert 16. Not the greatest shooting percentage, but not bad either, 34%. Nets were 10 of 33, just over 30%. But where, if there is one stat you just want to focus on if you're a Net fan, is that your team turned it over 17 times. And you got to take care of the basketball. The Bucks would turn it over 12. So the Bucks held that five turnover advantage. Who do I like in this series? Boy, I tell you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to this, this series, really. I mean, the, after four games, it's the same. I could say the same thing after game four as I would have said after game one, and that is... It's going to come down to really the health of the Nets. 
And if they have their guys coming back, what's that going to look like, though? I mean, if let's say Kyrie, who at my last check, my last check right before putting this video together, was he's now questionable for Game 5. If Kyrie plays Game 5, if he plays Game 5, is it going to be a regular Kyrie-type performance? Is he going to be hindered? I mean, there's a lot of question marks now, guys. A lot of question marks. Nets had this series, and I, I kind of feel a little bit bad for the Nets fans because they had the series. They could still get the series. I mean, don't get me wrong. But luck has not been on the side of the Brooklyn Nets, guys. And Milwaukee fans, you're out there before I close out this video. I mean, if you're a Nets fan or a Milwaukee fan, leave me a comment. But if you're a Milwaukee fan, you're probably getting a little fired up right now, you know, feeling good about things. But be careful, be careful, because if this goes seven, the longer this goes, it's going to probably favor the Nets. I mean, if it goes seven, advantage Nets, because they have, they're going to be at home and they could be much healthier. That, remain, that part remains to be seen. So leave me a comment, guys. Go ahead, hit the like. Hit the thumbs up, I should say. We will talk soon. Bye for now.